from the Westchester County Center. Here's a gold ball on the line here in Class B, and one team is a two-time defending champion. The other looking to upset Irvington. It's a one-two matchup between Irvington and Briarcliff. Hi again, everybody. Dan Severino, Kevin Devaney Jr. Thanks so much for joining us this Saturday evening. Well, we're wrapping things up here from the county center, and we've seen excellent games thus far, and now two really good schools going at it. One and two, a combined record of 40 and three. Clearly the two best teams in section one in class B all year long. With all respect to Willis of Valhalla was Irvington and Briarcliff. They met back in the middle of December. It was a one-sided game at Irvington. Briarcliff never really in the game, and all they thought about was we're going to get them back, we're going to get another shot, and it's going to be for a goal ball, and here we are tonight. Well, Briarcliff, whose two losses this year come to Irvington, as Kevin just mentioned, and also the Nassau County champions in Elmont. They have a very young team, and they're led by a freshman in Alana Lombardi. Yeah, Alana Lombardi's terrific. And, you know, uh, Coach Don Hamlin's been saying, I don't want to hear about how good we're going to be in a couple of years. I want to win now. And Alana Lombardi allows them to do that with what she does, handling the basketball, scoring, filling the stat sheet. Look, at she almost had a triple-double in their semifinal win over Valhalla to get to this point in a very low-scoring game. So Alana Lombardi, she's got to have a big game, maybe the game of her career, a very early part of her career, to for Barca to pull off this upset. When you think of Irvington, you can't say, without, obviously, Lindsay Halpern and what the season she is at. Lindsay Halpern had 45 points in last year's Section 1 championship game in overtime to beat Woodlands, and now here she is. She had 33 against Woodlands in the semifinal. She loves playing in this arena. It's going to be the last time she plays here, and she, she puts a picture up on the wall with what she's done here. Four-year starter, just a terrific all-around player. She does it from the outside, but really the most dangerous thing that she does is get out in transition, distribute the ball, finish on her own. Terrific, terrific player. So that's where we are. It's the Class B Championship game here in girls basketball section one hoops only on new 12 varsity on march 12th starting at 11 a.m watch the best of long island high school basketball battle for the right to be called champions live on channel 14 this doubleheader begins at 11 a.m with the class a finals followed by the class double a finals at 1 30 p.m Watch the best of Long Island High School basketball live on the big screen on Optimum Channel, Channel 14. Live from the Westchester County Center, it's the Class B championship game between the 20 and 2 Briarcliff Bears and the 21 Irvington Bulldogs. Hi again, everybody. Dan Savarino, Kevin Navini Jr. Thanks so much for joining us this Saturday evening. Kevin, of course, two teams, they met once this year. It was a, a large margin of victory for <laughs> Irvington. But you have the Bulldogs, two-time defending champions, taking on a team that's very, very young, but very talented as well. As Gina Mar said after the last game, after the semifinals, I said, hey, you're facing Briarcliff. You beat him by 29 back in December. She goes, they may be a few months older, but in basketball time, they're years older. And that Briarcliff team, she knows, this Briarcliff team, she knows, has improved dramatically since then. They got more seasons. I don't think they went into that regular season game expecting to see Irvington play at the level of speed they played at. Now they're ready for it, and it's hard to adjust in-game to a difference in speed. Now they're ready to try and slow down the Bulldogs and this dynasty as they're going for gold ball number seven in eight years. For Briarcliff wearing the all-blue uniforms, the white numbers, and the orange trim, their starting lineup of Hamlin, O'Donnell, Lombardi, Contento, and Plank. For Irvington wearing the whites, Valdez, Barrington, Paul Halpern, helping in uh, Degnan. Round out this starting five, and already a quick turnover, good defensive stop here for Briarcliff, and they'll have the basketball. Halpin was out on the three-point line, Valdez went to the corner, and Halpin goes to the basket, and Halpin threw, <laughs> was the ball thrown to where Halpin was standing, not where she was standing at the moment. Lombardi fouled on the floor. A team that's 20 and 2 overall. Their loss is coming to Irvington. Their other loss, a top 20 team, our Tri State Pole, who actually just won a Nassau County Championship today in Elmont. A one point victory over North Shore. I was there this morning. Quality victories. You were there. Look at you doing the third game of the day, different counties, different, you know, crossing bridges. Pay some tolls and make my way up here. Some good basketball. Three pointer from way downtown. And Lombardi will miss, fighting for the loose ball. Valdez, she'll push it up the floor. Here's Valdez, the junior guard, coast to coast, and a 2-0 lead. Valdez loves going coast to coast. I think she does so well for Irvington. You know, she scores about 10, 12 points a game, but it seems like she scores so much of those in transition. Lombardi with the miss, fresh 30 on the shot clock, three-pointer in the lane, no good from Plank. 
And another foul. Kelly Degden will pick up her first personal of the game. And shooting here will be Alana Lombardi. 15 points, nine rebounds, seven assists in that semifinal win. She's really a, a complete player. And to think that she is only a freshman, it's really just special to look at this town. Eight freshmen on this Briarcliff roster. Some of them are girls who sit on the bench and will be good in a couple years. See some confusion here for Irvington as they're getting a little frustration for the Bulldogs with each other. But eight freshmen on this Briarcliff roster and it's some prominent players in those names. Nice inbound play here underneath the basket. Degden almost got called for a second foul. And another offensive rebound. Lombardi. Well, they're winning the battle on the glass so far, Kevin. First couple possessions we've seen here. It's a good offensive rebound. A little bit more poise out of the young team. Trying to go over the top of Travel will be called against Briarcliff, though. And that will at least give Irvington the ball back. 21 on the season. Only lost this year. Undefeated Monroe Woodbury out of Section 9 in Double A. Just capped their postseason run, winning a Section 9 Double A championship today. Moving on to face the winner of Austin Alberta in the state regionals. So when you look at it, the losses on the schedule for both of these teams count for a county champion, a sectional champion, and a two-time defending champion. You look at Briar Cliff's other loss. Straight to the 10. And another quick little put-in. That's Casey Hamlin's first. 6-2 Briar Cliff lead before Lindsey Halpin takes a shot. Baseline jumper. Harrington too strong. Hamlin only had a point. Valhalla's victory, but Still a member of this team, a sophomore, and you can say an elder statesman. <laughs> On varsity since eighth grade. See the shot goes up and in. Everything falling for Briar Cliff. I, I thought they had to shoot their best game of the season. They're off to that start, 8-2. Degden for three. Pops around inside the paint. Pulling on the board is Matty Plank. Heaves a pass out to the stripe. Pump fake on the baseline. Contento saw that the entire way and drew the foul. She upended Lindsay Halpin skying and just kind of ducked and let her fall on her. And fortunately, nobody got hurt. As Irvington's going to take a timeout. They've had some bad possessions here offensively to start this game. You don't say that very often about Irvington over the course of four quarters. And they've had it here in under three minutes. Well, the path to get themselves back here to the county center. You know, it means so much to both of these teams. And one has been here numerous times. It's almost become a staple for Irvington. You need to get to the county center, and you need to win a gold ball. On the other side for Briarcliff, listen, they haven't won a state title. They won a state title back in 07, 08, but they're looking to get back on their winning ways. There was a nice run where the team that won the Section 1 championship went on to win the state federation championship. It started with Briarcliff. That run started, the then you went the next year. Mandy West now in Class A, then Irvington did it three out of four years. Their one loss was to only to Long Island. Lutheran in the Federation Tournament, so the state champion was coming out of Section 1 for a good stretch there, and you know, these are two teams that, you know, if they just feel they, feel they just get through this game, a state title is very much in their grip, but this is the toughest game maybe along the way. Drive to the mid-block, up of the right hand, Cadento, 13 points herself last game. Here's Hamlin with a second chance, bounces right off the tin. Pinballs around in the middle of the court and into the hands of Valdez. Here she is, the other way. An air ball and still lose, diving for every loose ball. I think we'll have a foul on this one instead of a jump, and it will be a foul. They're letting them play, letting them play, and then calling that foul. That's tough, but that's a tough call against Briarcliff. That's the third, uh, excuse me, second team foul. Matty Plank with the personal foul. Halpin, one of the most prolific scores you can see in this whole region. Still looking for her first points. Good pass inside, too strong for Barrington. And they're really letting these teams play. I mean, this is as much, much contact you'll see in girls basketball. Oh, for sure Barrington would get a call on that one. And 
Nento, the bounce pass to the far side. Harrington asking for a travel. Pulling up for a long two, nothing but net Lombardi. She's and got six. 10 to lead, and, and Lizzie Halpert has not taken a shot yet. Here she is, top of the key, will pass it off instead, far corner. Inside, the post move, Barrington, too strong. Gets the ball back. Barrington again, but she'll be fouled on the floor. Three-pointer too long from Valdez. Trying the home run pass and it'll touch right off of Halpin and stay with Briarcliff. And she's limping. Uh, she, she jumped for that ball to try and deflect it away and she's limping to get out. Now I've seen her get hurt a lot in games and not come out, but right there she's wincing as well. Three-pointer too strong for Maddie Plank, the sophomore guard. Halpin's been playing with a uh, sprained ankle as well. Left elbow, moving to the near corner now. Degnan off the arms of Alana Lombardi. The active hands and and just the way that they, these girls on Bradford were defending, it's a, a, stru, a stark contrast to what they did in the first matchup. Valdez drains it. They needed something to lift them up. Valdez has all five points, it's still down five. She had 14 in their semifinal win over Woodlands. On a 6 of 13 day. Now fighting for the loose ball. It will be a jump ball. Possession arrow favors the ladies in blue. So an inbounds at midcourt. Kevin, you were at that first meeting. I mean, I know you mentioned about how big and how much difference things have been so far in the early going. What adjustments need to be made for Briarcliff in this game compared to the last one? Well, for everything you mean, you know, they got to get Lindsay Halpin the ball in a position where she can score. and, and there's only so much you could say. I mean, Jackie Contento's done a terrific job, number 13, of denying Lindsay Halpin the ball, and especially in the half court. But at some point, you gotta do something to get your best player the ball. You can't let Briarcliff keep building on this lead. A charge and a personal foul against Plank, her second. To the baseline, skipping it right through the middle of the paint. And it will stay with Irvington. Halpin has a knack for, of course, you know it. You even just said about the score when we brought it up in our open. It's an offensive foul, bring it the other way. When, when you drop the big numbers that she has in the past, 45 points in last year's championship, MVP honors, she's up more than 30 on the regular. That just kind of shows you the kind of prolific scorer she can be. Yeah, and uh, really her numbers are not as high as they could be. She's over 20 points per game, but because she plays with so many blowouts. She doesn't play a lot of minutes, she doesn't take a lot of shots. She knows sometimes what everything's up against, that she doesn't have to carry the team. Other girls can score, other girls play, and she's a more of a facilitator, she's more of a point guard. So her scoring average in competitive games is way higher than it is in all games combined. And we're seeing her kind of cut through this foot, ankle problem, whatever it is. Mary Brereton went to the bench just now, also taking off her shoe on the Irvington bench at the end of the bench. Uh, she also seems to have some sort of injury in this first quarter. Abby Conklin will come out on the floor to replace Valdez. There might be blood on the jersey, that's why. Now put into the front court, Heather Hall loses the handle on the basketball. Hamlin will draw a foul on her own end of the court. Conklin's time on the floor is limited here in the first quarter as Valdez is back. Some discussion here on whether she touched or stepped out of bounds before the foul. Well, I checked actually, no, it was about the foul situation. That will be yeah. five already. So in the bonus here in the first quarter and shooting two will be Briarcliff. The fixtures on today's games, John Press, Donna Spafford, and Kim Saxton. Casey Hamlin at the line, Jordy has four. 
sinks the first. Same student section on that side of the court. <laughs> Same colors on both sides as our last game. And two for two at the line is Hamlin. So give her six points and a seven point advantage here in the first. Too high of a pass. That was Valdez looking for Heather Hall. Trying to get over the hands of Alana Lombardi. The outstretched hands. The ball just thrown out of bounds. A lot of unforced turnovers, but the stat that's really staggering right now is the fact that Lindsey Halpin, we are five and a half minutes into the Section 1 championship game, and she has taken zero shots. They break the trap. Good ball movement. Couldn't finish on the right block flank. Can't believe they didn't get a call there. Here's Halpin. And you saw she wanted to drive straight to the basket. Turned over the basketball instead. Hamlin weaves her way in. The scoop shot misses. Offensive rebound. Contento sent a screen. I don't think she really meant to, but a travel will be called on the drive from play. About two minutes remaining here in the first, and it's really been all Briarcliff, Kevin, to start this game. And a big reason why is number 15 hasn't been able to take any shots on top of turnovers. This 2-3 zone, really this matchup zone where they follow Halpa wherever she goes in the perimeter. Three-pointer. Good. Degnan. Kelly Degnan was an interior player. Most of her points scored last season came in the paint, and this year she's expanded her game. That's a big three-point shot to get back within four. Lombardi missing on the little bunny. Alpin down the far sideline, drives to the rack, and draws a foul in the process. Hammond was in the paint trying to draw the charge. That'll be her second personal foul. She established her positioning right there, but Halpin got by her, and she just kind of had to lean on her, stick out her shoulder to try and maybe draw a contact there. Couldn't sell it. Free throw misses. Briarcliff's going to call a timeout. 91 seconds to play here in the first quarter. Well, as we said, it really has been all the team that you're looking at right now. Briarcliff to begin this opening frame. They've been missing some shots, but even the ones they have been missing, they've been following up for the most part in offensive rebounds. And that is just something that can obviously win you a ball game. And I think the way this game has been officiated so far has definitely favored a Briarcliff team that has a little bit deeper bench, with a little bit of a better bench, but also has bigger, more size, and a little bit more strength in the paint. So Halpin will shoot her second of two free throws, missed the first, and still looking for her first points today. Oh for 2. Hamlin, they're gonna call a jump ball. <laughs> Seems she had a good amount of the possession there. Yeah. That's why she was disagreeing with the call. I would say the calls have not gone Briar this way so far. Yet they still lead by four. Valdez, Halpin inside, and a push from behind as Degden was there. She drew herself the fifth foul, so she'll be shooting a pair of free throws. Both teams in the bonus for the last 125 of this quarter. throws have been a struggle so far to get back in this contest and that's now three straight misses from the charity strike. Bounces around the cylinder and still won't fall through the nylon. A bullet down low and Contento Extends the lead. Contento did a little backdoor cut there, and Maddie Plague found it with a bullet. Three pointer. Halpin rattles out. Kept in. So, some good chances. Hustle play by Valdez. Degden just couldn't answer on the left block. 
think he's got to relax here. I just feel like they're, they're down, and it's okay. It's still the first quarter of the championship, but they just feel like they're just pushing now. They're pressing more than they need to. Hamlin gets up for dribble, fires a pass to the near side of the court. Contento down the left side, <laughs> but a travel is going to be called against Matty Plank. Three travels already in the first quarter. Ten second differential between the timer and the game clock. Valdez, here's a three. Pops out back iron, hustles for the loose ball, pick it up for a fresh possession. Going downstairs, keeping it in his Degnan. Here's the three pointer on the way. And Abby Conklin can't get it to go. So they've been struggling with their shots. Across midcourt, five seconds to play in the quarter. Plank pulls up from 14, and it rattles in. It's an eight point lead at the end of one quarter of basketball. So Briarcliff has been ahead the entire way. 16-8 is the score after eight minutes over Irvington in the Class B championship game, only on News 12 Varsity. On March 11th, starting at 5 p.m., watch the best of New Jersey high school basketball battle for the right to be called champions, live on Channel 14. At the buzzer, good! This doubleheader begins at 5 p.m. with the non-public B finals, followed by the non-public A finals at 7 p.m. Watch the best of New Jersey high school basketball live on the big screen on Optimum Channel, Channel 14. It's Hudson Valley girls basketball, and it's a section one championship game in Class B. Briarcliff leading Irvington, a 1-2 matchup here from the Westchester County Center. Dan Savarino, Kevin Devaney, thanks so much for joining us on this Saturday evening. Briarcliff wearing the blue uniform, stops and bottoms. They go from left to right. Irvington, the two-time defending champions, wear the all-whites. Alpin's still looking for her first points, Kevin, and on the other side, again, for Briarcliff, I mean, they, the calls haven't gone their way, but they've still been playing solid defense. You can safely say that was the worst quarter of basketball maybe Irvington's played all season, and credit to Briarcliff, they forced that to happen. They pushed the tempo, they've denied Lindsay Halpin in the basketball, they were solid enough on the glass, and they have, rightfully, have an eight-point lead. Lascone comes out on the floor for her first appearance. She's out there with Valdez inside the paint. Hall, who will miss. Degnan, Hall, and Halpin. The shots that Irvington are missing are just not Irvington misses. All year long, shots at that fall. The offensive rebound goes back up and in as well. See, Hamlin's shot is rejected by Valdez. It's Hamlin, Lombardi, Contento, Plank, and Kelly O'Donnell. A freshman, three sophomores, and the senior in Contento. To the left block, Degnan, too strong, and got pushed from behind. And I think actually Halpin was the one who pushed her own teammate accidentally. If you're over to coach Gina Mar, you gotta be asking yourself, how many layups are we gonna miss? This game could be easily tied, the way that they've shot the ball in the paint. It's been rough to watch. Jordan Smith, an eighth grader, but has tons of size as their forward comes out and plays the middle of that 2-3 zone. Blank coming off an eight-point outing. Matched up with another number four team, Muscone. Drives to the mid block, and it's fouled. You're seeing the free throw, uh, the, the field goal percentages for both teams there. Briarcliff with 30, which is low for them as well, but Irvington 16%. And yeah, they take it to three point shots, but a lot of their misses have also been inside. Escone will pick up the foul, be her first, teams first. Both teams are in the bonus for really the last minute and a half of the first. Valdez will take a seat. Irvington comes back out. She'll amend the ball to Halpin. After a two for two trip at the stripe for Plank. To the baseline. 
Burnton fouled on the shot. Jordan Smith will pick up her first. Team second already in this second quarter. Kevin, you've seen a lot of teams obviously here in section one. I mean, when you just look at these two groups in class B, how do you match them up with really the rest of what you're going to see in the surrounding area? Uh, you know, I, I think the winner of this game will have a very good shot to be the Section 9 champion uh, and make it back to the state Final Four. And, and, you know, when you look at this is really good Class B basketball. Uh, especially, you know, they, they've really had no problems with Long Island teams in recent years as well. Class B has not had a Long Island team make it to the state Final Four. And see Brycliffe now drives to the basket and an offensive foul called against Matty Plank. Her third foul. So Plank will go to the bench. And Don Hamlin is so upset. He's played so well. He's played so well defensively. I will say this. I don't think any coach has scouted any team, boys, girls, maybe anywhere in New York State, as much as Don Hamlin, Hamlin has scouted everything this year. He, he must have been at double-digit games. I know this because I was at double-digit games. <laughs> Offensive foul. I guess Brereton, her third as well. So Plank goes down with two, with three fouls. And Brereton as well. And she'll go and sit. O'Donnell was the one to draw the charge. We've got plenty of fouls here in the early going as Hamlin almost loses a handle on the basketball. Jump ball will be the call. Possession will give it to the defending champion Bulldogs. Jamar, the helm for a very long time for this program. A lot of storied success. No look pass, and Harrington gets lucky on that because Hamlin's hand was in the way. And there was no one behind her. She assumed somebody was cutting back door and was going to be there for a layup. Catch and shoot. Degnan planks off the front of the iron, gets a second opportunity, misses again, fights underneath the hoop. Swarming away, Bob Alato. Contento now on the near wing. And between the circles will be a Lombardi. Hamlin's had a strong first already. Five seconds on the shot clock, three-pointer will miss from the freshman. Valdez. Top of the key. Alpha didn't cut back the other way. So miscommunication out there between the two. And you can see Valdez getting visibly upset on the court today from some of the missed passes, but even some of her missed shot opportunities. Cutting inside. Stopping and popping from about 10 feet out was a Lombardi, but a miss. Teams are matching offensive infutility right now. Alpin, hard dribble, and Valdez will have seven. Alpin made the play happen. Contento trying to get back. Jump ball underneath the hoop. Well, Alpin doesn't have a point yet, but she's at least making everyone else around her better, and that's what great players do. That's what really textbook players do. Make everyone else around you better. And, and Olivia Valdez recognizes that Halpin's not getting shots. She's not getting opportunities. She has to step up here and at least get some double digits. She did there. Cutting the deficit back to eight. Hamlin for a three. Misses from the far wing. Transition. Valdez. Degden. Tic-tac-toe. That is vintage Irvington. Push the ball up the court, cross court pass, go right back, get the defender spinning, and Don Hamlin doesn't like it. He calls timeout. 4-11 to go in this first half. 4-10 to go with the first half. Prior to the head, 18 to 12.
We resume play from the county center. Briarcliff with the basketball from left to right. Halpin with the strip, goes straight to the rack. Sits on the cylinder again, but will fight and get another opportunity. Bounce pass, Muscone, she misses. Knocked out of bounds, it will go to Irvington. Substitution out on the floor. Maya Salad will come out. Flaja, a freshman. Valdez steps into a three. Misses, offensive board, another opportunity. Kicked out to the mid block. Bounces around a couple times. Valdez couldn't get it to fall. And now a foul will be on the floor and go the other way to Briarcliff. Finally a call in Briarcliff's favor, and I don't think it was a very good call. The ball bouncing around. Really three Irvington players and, and one, two Briarcliff defenders. Degging's second personal foul. Both teams have three. 315 remaining in the half. Knocked out, Brian Cliff off the ball with 14 seconds on the timer. One-handed pass to Lombardi. The freshman surveys the court. Hamlin with six on the timer. Dribbles to the left wing. One second, heaves it up and would have been a shot clock violation. To the left elbow, can't get the roll, Muscone. Ball go back to Irvington. It's a little sloppy start between two teams that are, again, they're still fighting for every loose ball though. When the shots aren't falling, you can't ever take away the hustle on the floor to get to the rock. First travel of the game against Irvington. Hamlin, the sophomore, against Lindsey Halpin. Lombardi drives the baseline, blocked from behind by Muscone. They hit the deck, Halpin squirts the ball over to Heather Hall. Here's Valdez, steps to the basket and a little slow to get up as well. She hit the floor hard. An odd man rush the other way and an offensive foul. They're gonna say Lombardi reached her arm out, and looks like she did. Olivia Valdez, furious she didn't get a call. Irvin the bench, furious they didn't get a call here. Hall Valdez puts it on the floor, kicks out, short corner, and that will be a travel on the up down. Going to want to step into that two point attempt. Saw a player right in her face. Prior Clip's done an excellent job so far, not just getting to the passing lanes, but contesting most of these shot opportunities. Contento, the senior, spins at the foul line, heaves it up, no good. Offensive rebound. The fresh 30, she'll get called for a travel. There has been some bizarre officiating in this game. A lot of people just shaking their heads. Halpin into the front court. And she was fouled on her way to the basket. So that will be five against Briarcliff, meaning two free throw opportunities for Lindsey Halpin, who has missed both of her attempts from the charity stripe today. Still no points on the board. And there's her first. Sometimes for a shooter, it's a free throw that gets him going. One for seven. It's a team from the free throw line. That was also the first free throw made 
just hitting on the cylinder again. This has been the strangest half of basketball I think I've seen in a long time. Like somebody left some gum up there or something. I don't know. I was just sitting. How did that not fall? <laughs> Conklin the other way. Degnan. Valdez, good ball movement, and it turns into two points for Heather Hall. What a pass by Valdez. Two defenders converged on her. She knew that Hall was open, got her the basketball for the layup. Back, in, back within three. And a foul as Lombardi was attacking the rim. So a three-point lead now for Briarcliff, who again has led the entire way. It's also the fourth team foul against Irvington. Lombardi will miss a free throw. That ball will touch the net. I, you can't <laughs> even out of the basket. It, it's not even just bad. It's not bad free throw shooting at all. It's not. They're not bad misses. Just unlucky rolls. And now it gets in your head a little bit. So 0 for 2 at the line. Stays at a three-point lead. Halpin to the mid post. Downstairs, they try and find Degnan again. Pulling back is going to be Conklin. Valdez stops and pops from 16. Front iron, back iron, and the carom for Briarcliff. Lombardi gets out of danger with her speed, gets blocked inside the lane by Halpin. Now here she goes. Stretch pass out, and another two for Heather Hall. And as bad as Irvington played in this first half, we're under 30 seconds to go, and they're back within one. Timer is off. Contento on the near wing. And now you feel the Irvington fans have gotten into it with a defense, defense chant, and a possession arrow will be in their favor on a jump ball. <laughs> There's been like a CYO number of jump balls in this game, but that was great defense there, started by Libby Valdez, who has been fighting for Irvington this entire way. And they have a chance to go into the half now with a lead. Five seconds to play in the half. Helping from NBA range. Drains her first shot. And the lead as the half expires. 20 to 18. That was like everything about Lindsay Halpin wrapped into one play. She did nothing the entire half. She distributed the ball well. She defended well. She didn't let the defense overtake her whole team by doubling her. And then she says, I'm just going to pull up here and give us the lead. The worst half of basketball Irvington has played all year. It's been in the Section 1 championship, and they have a two-point lead going into the break. Just a weird half overall for both of these teams. 20 to 18. Irvington comes back, the two-time defending champions, to go into the locker room ahead. We'll be back with more on News 12 Varsity. March 12th, starting at 11 a.m., watch the best of Long Island high school basketball battle for the right to be called champions. Live on Channel 14. This doubleheader begins at 11 a.m. with the Class A Finals. Followed by the Class AA Finals at 1.30 p.m. Watch the best of Long Island high school basketball live on the big screen on Optimum Channel, Channel 14. Welcome back to the Westchester County Center. Dan Savarino, Kevin Navini Jr., Kobe Nelson, our producer today. Thanks so much for joining us for the Section 1 Class B Championship game. The two-time defending champion, Irvington Bulldogs, now with a lead over the 20-2 Briarcliff Bears. Kevin, it was a real sloppy first half, a very strange first half in a lot of different ways. But the first bucket that Lindsey Halpin makes of the day, it's an NBA range three to end. The first two quarters. We call it the D-League range. We have D-League teams to play here at the county stair. No <laughs> NBA teams play here, but you're right. It was at that distance. And uh, Lindsey Halpin, what a mask. A very quiet, very weird, very slow start for the best player on the floor to go out there and hit that shot the way she did at the buzzer. Reset the lineup for you as it's Hamlin, O'Donnell, Lombardi, Contento, and Maddie Plank rounding out. The five. Maddie Plank out there with three fouls. They have to turn around jumper to start. The pretty left-handed finish. Halpin passes up the shot. And knocked out of bounds. For the other side of Irvington, Valdez steps on the floor with Brereton, Heather Hall, Halpin, and Degnan. Brereton 
Real active star for Briarcliff, especially on the defensive side of the end. It pass inside, Hamlin with the right hand, the lead is back for Briarcliff. Nice little set run there for Hamlin coming out of the break here. Two good possessions for Briarcliff to start after a very slow start all around. Off there for Brereton, also playing with three fouls. Sit pass, Valdez dribbles for a right elbow jumper. An air ball. Brereton will knock it back in, but it'll go to Matty Plank. Plank with five points today. Pulls up for a three Ooh. and drains it. Where has this been all first half? Her spotting up there, right on a defender and hitting that shot. A 7-0 run to start this half for Briarcliff. Valdez almost loses a handle as Hamlin got her hand down there. Good little hop step to the lane. The Euro travel, the Euro, Euro, Euro step, excuse me. <laughs> I always laugh when people say, oh, it wasn't travel, that was a Euro step. And I think Olivia Valdez got away with one there. Hamlin along the wing. Drives to the foul line, scoots it out. Three-pointer Hamlin. That'll be a miss. Fighting for the rebound is Lombardi. Last touched off of Irvington, so get 28 seconds on the timer for Briarcliff and another possession. Real good start here out of the gate as they have been front runners in this game. Contento. Baseline J is too long. Valdez, here's Heather Hall. Good ball movement again, and one. Raritan. Take a late call against Alana Lombardi, number 12. So an N1 finish with a chance now for Brereton, who had a slow start herself. Had three fouls in the first half, had to sit. Now a chance to make an N1 to tie the game back up. One thing the Bulldogs have done well, especially late in that second quarter and now into the third, is that ball movement. Tic-tac-toe passing right along the blocks. She'll miss the N1 opportunity. Here's a three, and foul is from the left wing. She's got five in this half. She has 12 in the game. And a travel. Five already for Briarcliff. A little more than two and a half into this third. A 7-0 run started for Briarcliff. Now Irvington has the lead, looking to extend. They cannot. Valdez on the three-point miss. Last touch off of her leg. I think from the middle of the first quarter on, Briarcliff has done a shoddy job of boxing out. That's a very simple thing you could just adjust. Uh, Coach Don Hamlin, I'm sure, is noticing it. But right there, that was a chance for everything to get another second opportunity like they did off the missed free throw before. Lombardi, three-pointer rattles out. Hey, you make a point of that, Kevin. And back in the first quarter, really, it was the offensive rebounding that was giving them those opportunities. Block shot there by Casey Hamlin. Blocked it low and out of bounds. Halpin only has four points. She has been facilitating. She's been doubled pretty much. She's had number 12 and number 13 around there all times. Been, Jackie Contento has really been shadowing her. And then Alana Lombardi's been helping. And I've seen her score 40 points. I've seen her win championships, but I've never seen her really press with her own shot. Alpin the pump fake goes right into a double team. Knocked off of one of the Bears and eventually picked back up. Rarington tried to heave up a shot from about 14. Not sure why she felt she had to shoot that right there. Over the head pass to the baseline. And 10 feet away, Lombardi is money. Nice finish there, the baseline jumper. We're seeing an offensive rhythm for both teams that we just didn't see in this first half. She has eaten the contest. Got it feeding downstairs, another chance, little hoop shot by Heather Hall, and the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar doesn't work. Contento to the block, Lombardi. She thought she got fouled, but let's say play on. 
Halpin stutter step move, drive into the rack, and she'll shoot a pair of free throws. Fouls on it's Kelly O'Donnell, number four. They're doing a great job of denying her on the perimeter, so Lindsey Halpin's got to start taking this game over by driving to the basket. Much more fluid game here in the third compared to what we saw in the first yeah. two quarters. Consistent scoring both ways. And Halpin's free throw struggles continue. As a team, they only hit one, and she was the one who hit that one. One for two. Five points for the senior guard. Blank lowers the shoulder, step back, and what a beautiful finish. A nice jump shot gives the lead back to the Bears. 29-28, Halpin, long three-pointer, nicks off the front of the rim. We'll get the ball back. Drive inside, feeds Brereton, and fouled at the block. Hammond will pick up her third. The third one against Friar Cook in this game. Brereton's first free throw. Connects. And the second is true. 30 to 29, some lead changes here in the third. Briarcliff had the advantage for almost two full quarters until a three point shot by Halpin to end the first half. From the mid post, Plank comes up short on the jumper opportunity. Halpin threads the needle. Valdez. She misses, and Degnan draws a foul. Kelly Degnan coming off a six-point outing against Woodlands. The junior with experience. Knocks down the first. Five points back in that first half. And a three-point lead, and believe it or not, the largest lead of the game for Irvington. Moving up into the front court. Blank yo-yos the basketball. Valdez matches up with her. Takes the screen. Hamlin thought about the three-pointer. Spins around, moves to the left hand. Stop from about 12 feet out. And an air ball. Halpin. Beats Valdez, now Degnan. Right elbow jumper, too long from Heather Hall. Much better looks at the basket for Irvington from mid-range. Floats it inside, patient play by Contento, but misses. Four on two, Halpin, Valdez for three, yes! Great job in transition. Everyone thought Halpin was going to drive to the basket. Two defenders back down into the paint. She dissed it right out to Valdez. And Valdez, she's been the MVP tonight for Irvington as they now open up their biggest lead of 35-29 with just under a minute to go in the third quarter. She has 18 points in the contest. But check that, excuse me, she has 15 points in the contest. Olivia Valdez. And that extends it to a six-point lead for Irvington over Briarcliff late in the third quarter. Dan Savarino, Kev Devaney, thanks so much for joining us here from the County Center. It's the Section 1 Class B Championship game. As we told you, it's kind of been all Briarcliff up until late. Now going back and forth, we were seeing much better basketball on the floor. Both teams are getting in their rhythm. Both teams are playing like the 20 win seasons they've had. Yeah. All five back out on the floor following the Briarcliff timeout. 
will send their starting lineup out there of Hamlin, O'Donnell, Lombardi, Contento, and Plank. Halpin Valdez. Hall. Dregnan. And Brereton. Starting lineups out there late in the third quarter. Briarcliff with the ball from right to left. Hamlin with the crossover move. Jump pass to the near wing. Lombardi. Hamlin spins around, drives the scoop shot, misses. A little too strong. Valdez from the wing to Halpin. Back to Valdez with 15 points today. Her last two buckets were three pointers. Tried to lead a pass to Degden. They were just a little bit off. And that's happened a couple of times. We saw it especially back in that first quarter. And Irvington was really having some difficulty turning over the basketball. Hamlin with a buck 15. To the short corner. Plank. Back center defender, misses on the left-handed shot. Degden underneath the hoop. Hall, Halpin, drives into a triple team. We'll just move it out. Valdez dials up a three, too long. And rebounded by O'Donnell for the Bears with under a minute to play in the third. Contento. Nothing but net for a long two. This has been a rough quarter for Briarcliff. They need Jackie Contento to get contributing on both ends. She's been so good defensively tonight against Halpin, holding her to four points with that basket clutch. Cuts it to four now, the deficit with 30 seconds, under 30 seconds left now in the third. I think Briarcliff started with a 7-0 run. Now they trail by four. When I say started, I mean started this quarter with a 7-0 run. And they were up fairly big to begin the game. Still single digits, but pig in Irvington standards. Floats it to the foul line. Fires a pass down low. Good ball moving, but one pass too many as they were trying to find Degnan. And Valdez will pick up a personal foul, slowing down Lombardi. Irvington looks at some points like they're just, you know, they're executing the half court, they're moving without the ball, they're getting to the right spot. And then all of a sudden, they just they push the tempo a little too quick. And right there, that quick pass led to a turnover and then a foul in transition. And not a terrible foul for Valdez. Only her first personal and the team's first in the quarter. Ten seconds to play in the third frame. Hamlin. A foul. So there's only second team foul, so they're not going to be shooting, as you said, in the bonus yet. Well, 5.6 seconds, so they're going to wipe it after this expires anyway. 5.6 on the clock. And I think we have another foul. We do. Whew. So just like that, as I tell you, Kevin, it's not a bad foul. It's only the first one, believe it or not, through seven more minutes. And now three within a 10-second frame. Contento loses the handle. Valdez gets the ball back. One second left. Here's a half-court shot. Rarington will come up short, but that ends the third frame. The two-town defending champions have a four-point advantage heading into the fourth. We'll be back with more on News 12 Varsity. On March 11, starting at 5 p.m., watch the best of New Jersey high school basketball battle for the right to be called champions live on Channel 14. At the buzzer, good! This doubleheader begins at 5 p.m. with the non-public B finals, followed by the non-public A finals at 7 p.m. Watch the best of New Jersey high school basketball live on the big screen on Optimum Channel, Channel 14. Eight minutes to play here at the County Center. Dan Saverino, Kevin Devaney, thanks so much for joining us. Four-point lead for Irvington over Briarcliff. So like the end of the second quarter, they end the third with a lead. Briarcliff wears the blue uniforms, tops and bottoms. They go from right to left. Hamlin, Plank, Contento, Lombardi. And O'Donnell round out. Foul already 
just 20 seconds in. This has been the most inconsistently officiated game of the week. It's been really tough. I mean, I, if you're if you're both coaches, you know, you, you, you see a call like that to start the fourth quarter of the championship game. Now, fourth foul called against Burrington. And that's how you want to start the quarter. That's rough. Valdez, Halpin, Mascone, who just came in, and Degnan are the five with the ladies wearing white uniforms today. Hamlin thought about the three. Moves out to the near corner. Here comes a three from Lombardi. The two strong. Briarcliff led most of the first, nearly all of the second, until a three-point shot by Halpin. Her first field goal and only field goal made today. And then they started on a 7-0 run to begin the third frame. However, go into the fourth quarter trailing. This, what is on the shot clock? Something's wrong with the shot clock. One second, I think that's on the shot clock, and <laughs> it falls. It was 48 seconds or something on there. I don't know what that was. I, I don't know. I've been watching it all week and I hadn't seen it do that. And I think they have it ticking off as one, but like a 1.2. It's supposed to be a point in between, like one tenth of oh, a second. Oh, I've not seen that. It okay. just confused me. I just noticed it now for the first time myself in two games. Clearly, I'm very observant. Maddie Plank. Foul go against Moscone. But you're just not used to ever seeing that on a shot clock. No shot clock here on the free throws as Maddie Plank misses the first. Fourth foul against Mascone. Oh for two. Free throws have not been friendly to either side. Valdez. Hard move to the basket, and a timeout for Briarcliff. How good has she been tonight? She extends the lead to eight. She's been playing with so much emotion. We've seen frustration, we've seen anger, we've seen excitement, and we're seeing her right now celebrating, I think, a cramp in the leg of Lindsay Halpin, as she was celebrating with Libby Valdez, and she went down. Oh man, that was a little scary, but it forced it's just a cramp. For Valdez, 17 points in the contest, coming off the 14 points she scored in that semifinal win over Woodlands. A junior who again comes on the floor with experience and really is a dynamic player. And that's one thing you can say about Alpin, you can say that about Valdez. Both of them are not just distributors, they're depositors as well. The numbers may not be there today for Halpin, the points margin, but the assists are still up. It's now a eight point lead for Irvington over Briarcliff. And a smart timeout called by Don Hamlin. Trying to slow down his group. So Lindsay Halpin spent that entire timeout tending to a cramp that she suffered while celebrating with her teammates after going up by eight. This has been a strange game in many ways. It's been a very bizarre evening. Still can't get over that one free throw that just sat. Yes. And just didn't move, and then eventually fell out the other way. Valdez, as I said, been terrific. 17 points, six rebounds. 17 of the 39 points for Irvington. 6.22 to play in the fourth. It'll be an inbound to the right of the basket. Not sure what the whistle was for. I timeout that's going to be called by Irvington. Yeah, they need to stop because Lindsay Halpin can't play. She's cramping up too much in that right leg. And this is why you have timeouts in Irvington. You have three fulls and a 30 left. So they had five timeouts left. Use one now. Give her a breather. They may have to take her out. 6.22 to go here. The official actually gave the ball to Irvington. And it was supposed to be Briarcliff after the make. At the Irvington basket, it was supposed to be Briarcliff, Briarcliff's timeout. They get the ball to Irvington, so I'm not sure how they're going to put, maybe put a second back on the clock. Kevin, you've seen, you know many of the teams, not just in this area, but of course the tri-state area. These two not in your top 20 poll, but still two very good schools, two very good programs, 20 wins on the season. 
I'm not saying crack them in there, but yeah. where, where do you put them? I know you said that they can compete for a state championship, but if you put them in the other classes, where do you think they still match up? I, I think they have a good shot of winning Section 1 in Class A. You know, Somers and Eastchester are playing for the Section Championship in A tomorrow night here. You can, you can watch live on the Stillvarsity.com. I think every team would give a run to either one of those teams. Briarcliff tonight, defensively, has been very good. It's just shooting the basketball has not been good after the first quarter for Briarcliff. And, they got to worry about the B championship before they can think about playing for the A. Offensive foul, push off for Alana Lombardi. It's the second time she's been called for that exact play, the push off. So a third personal foul against Lombardi. First team foul against Briarcliff. Two minutes into the fourth. To the baseline, Hall. Egnan, now Valdez. The game high, 17 points. Calls out the signals, moves to the far side. Lombardi tries to cut her off. Halpin top of the key. Dribbles, drives, scoop shot, no good. Gets the rock back, feeds it in, and the bank shot for Moscone. I don't know how she can catch her own rebound. Maybe someone deflected the shot, but Halpin kept it alive and got the feed to Moscone for the bucket. 10 point lead, largest of the game. Halpin calls on the foul. Hamlin's going to shoot a pair of free throws. As we said, free throws, nothing special for either side. And if Briarcliff's going to come back and chip away with the five, nearly 5.30 remaining, he's going to be very, very important. She hits a first and drains the second. Four points in the half. 10 points in the contest for Casey Hamlin. First points of the fourth quarter for Briarcliff. I think they had gone so long without scoring. Valdez jumps up into the lane and finishes. She might be having the game of her life. 19 points. Coming up on the biggest stage. Three-pointer Lombardi. Nicks off the front of the iron. Halpin between the rings. Now they'll run a set. Doesn't take the screen, instead just drives to the rack and finishes with the right hand. And Contento got out of position right there and Lindsay Halpin, I give her a lot of credit. They took away her game tonight. They took away the perimeter game, they took away penetration and she never pressed. She let her teammates carry her. There were some times where they, no one was carrying anybody. And then late in that second quarter, they made their run to close the half, got the lead, and they've never looked back. Last year, she had 45 in this game. Up to this point, she only has seven. But like you said, it's everything else that she's been doing around her, stuff that has not always been showing up in the stat sheet as an assist or a rebound. Cramping up a couple of minutes ago, and that drive didn't look like someone that could barely walk. Maybe she's fooling all of us. So, 439, 12-point lead, largest for either side today. And as they clean up some condensation, some water that was spilt on the floor on the far side. Hamlin to Lombardi. Hamlin to the rack. And the blocking foul. I'll go against Degnan. Now check that actually, I think they're gonna give it against Moscone, which would be her fifth. So it is, she DQ'd in this game. Two points for the sophomore. She chipped in with some good minutes as well. She did, she played some really good minutes off the bench. Her five fouls, they were good fouls in some ways. She cut down on, I remember cutting down on a, on a fast break and 
gave quality minutes for a team whose starters just didn't really have any sort of rhythm early on. And remember, she came in for Brereton, who was also dealing with foul trouble herself, playing with now four personals. Hamlin hits the free throws. Ten point deficit for Briarcliff. Valdez with 19 points. Now Hamlin is playing with seven. Drives the left hand straight to the cup. Misses wide left. And Contento will have the basketball. As Plank actually got tangled up with the official on the baseline. Missed the calls from her bench. Signals out to her teammates. Good ball handler, stops and pops, and the left-handed runner will miss. Jump ball, possession to Irvington. This point, Silly, you look at prior clip, I mean, one senior in their lineup. <laughs> They are, you know, you look at Irvington, of course, they've always been a powerhouse for years. Yeah. Back-to-back -back championships. But it, on the other side, since yeah. the last it's seven. A, it's, it's, it's the things to come for, for Section 1 and Class B with, with Briarcliff, the, how good they are. Halpin, three-point shot up and off the mark. And Valdez is there for the rebound again. Valdez gets stripped from behind by Hamlin. With the numbers, little touch back to Hamlin. And she gets the layup to fall. Nice little transition finish, but Valdez going the other way, all alone. Gets it right back, Halpin, knowing that Valdez was down on the, on the ground, get the ball taken away before, she'd be on the other end still. Valdez, a gritty player, only a junior. Here's Plank, three-pointer rattles out. She's got a very nice shot. That's what people say about every left-handed shooter. But no, she does have a good looking shot. She can actually square her shoulders and create her own shot off the dribble. She has a great quick release. That's what college coaches look for, the release that Maddie Plank has. Hall, Warrington, top of the key, good. Mary Brereton with the big shot there. Again, she's the one also been saddled with fouls all game. Team point lead, Hamlin. Long three. Yeah, I, I think the scoreboard here at the arena is wrong. They have it as 50. The last session was a three. We'll see. We can make a little wager if you'd like. I shouldn't be betting. I haven't had much luck lately. Long pass to the front court. Flank. Lombardi gets fouled. Slow against Degnan. Maybe they're not going to change it. I don't see any sort of discussion at the table. I don't think anybody notices it. He said it's been a weird night. So our, our scoreboard operator, our statistician, Chris Karen, Jordan Griffith, decided that we're going to Make the change, go with the scoreboard here at the arena, make it 50 to 39. But it looked like Brereton was inside of the three-point line, or at least had a foot on line. Unless Irvington, under two minutes to go, to try and make it a third straight gold ball, seventh in eight years. In terms of dynasties in this area, obviously you cannot, it's hard to rank them. But for what Gina Mara has done in this program, where do you see this as up there, of really just of Section 1 basketball as a whole? You know, you look at Section 1 girls basketball has been known for its dynasties, including the one that the other dynasty in Class AA, Vosting, four-time state champions, six-time section champions in Class AA and Section 1. And, uh, you know, Irvington and Austin have kind of been coinciding. It's been the large school and the small school and what they've done. Irvington won four straight state championships uh, before falling, and one of the players in the middle of that was Lexi, Lexi Martins, who's underneath the basket on the Briarcliff side. Uh, played her career at Lehigh and now is at George Washington, finishing up her four seasons. And, but it's, it's there, and then, you, you know, you, 
What Irvington has done in this span, it ranks with Haldane has done at the very small school level, Class D and now Class C. And then, of course, Our Lady of Lords, what they did uh, with Brian Georges, who's now the Marist head coach, winning all those section of state titles. So a minute 52 away from winning their third straight. An 11-point lead. Double teaming Halpin on the inbound, and Valdez finally finds Brereton. Now Halpin will dribble the basketball on the far side. Excellent crossover move. Dumps it off, but there's going to be a foul beforehand. O'Donnell will pick up her fourth. So in the second team foul, so three more to the in the bonus. And they're gonna probably have to foul here if they're gonna stop the clock. You see, inbound, turn over. Plank weaves her way oh. to the basket. That's a highlight reel. Now tries to get the steal. And will end up fouling Valdez underneath the hoop. It's gonna be a fourth foul on Plank, which is, you know, the danger is that she's the most dangerous player on the court right now, scoring-wise, but she's also now playing with four fouls. She just keeps weaving through opponents. Almost like they're pylons in a warm-up drill. Salaj will come in to replace O'Donnell, who's playing with those four. 89 seconds to go, nine-point game. And Valdez will get fouled, and a chance to reach 20. Now check that actually only be at a fourth team foul. My mistake still had the one foul to give. Still has another chance to reach 20. <laughs> yeah, if you gotta rack up fouls here, you might as well put some reserves in here so you don't get defense for offense. Barbalato coming on the hardwood. And we'll sub out for most likely Lombardi in just a moment. Here's Valdez. And there's 21 points. What a play there. And now, just over a minute left from the coronation of a champion. Three-pointer, Plank. Over the back foul. And that's gonna be all for Brereton. Well, it wasn't the prettiest star for Irvington. It wasn't a pretty star for either team. But I think that three-pointer by Halpin to really seal off the end of that first half kind of just made that statement that we're going to come out, we're going to come here to play in, in the third and fourth, and that's exactly what they did, extending this lead mostly in the fourth frame. She needs to go to 30 feet to find her first open shot of the night, and <laughs> she nails it. And uh, that was pretty amazing for her to, to, to end the half that way, end it on a run. Just the emotion of that, just, you know, it, it makes the, the three-story climb up to the locker room here at the county center a little bit easier on the knees when you have a lead. Uh, and you get a lead like that. And that's just what Lindsay Halpin does. And again, I just can't say enough about how she just never really pressed for her own game. It's all about the team. And her team is now up by 10 with just over a minute left. It's something very impressive for not just a high school player, but I think for almost any athlete on the big stage. And now she'll have a chance to shoot because this is the fifth team foul. Hamlin now picked up her fourth. And Halpin is gonna shoot the pair of free throws. With a minute and one seconds remaining. And 101 away from a three-peat. Two for two at the line. 12 point game. Plank for three. And the air ball will give Errington the ball back with 53 seconds remaining. Halpin again, this is gonna be one of the rare games where she doesn't have double, well, she might still get it, but crucially it's double digits. Nine, nine points right now. And I'm sure they're gonna work to get her the basketball here so she can make the free throws to close it out. But seven assists in a game where her team didn't finish very often. Nine points, seven assists, six rebounds. And 
nice moment as Briarcliff's Jackie Contento, the only senior out there who started in this lineup, will come off and give hugs to everyone on her bench and her coach. You know, you feel for Jackie Contento. She went out there and she played her heart out defensively on, on Lindsey Halpin. She's the reason why Lindsey Halpin is just now getting to double digits in points. Ten points now for Halpin with another free throw coming. Under a minute to go in the fourth quarter. You thought if you did that, she thought if she did that, she'd give her team a chance to win. They just couldn't make the shots. They couldn't sustain that. Couldn't stop that run that Irvington went on. And, you know, Contento, I'm sure, here is all about how this team's going to be in a couple years. She's going to be in college when this team most likely wins one, two, maybe even three championships. But uh, she's been so good tonight, and, and she deserves that round of applause. Briarcliff, a team that's going to return basically everything <laughs> but Contento, especially in terms of starters. And now they're checking something over at the scorer's table. Are they finding that point and giving it back? Where they're going over it. Hey, I don't know if that was a three before. For three minutes later? Mm. I'm sure Mary Brereton wants that point. And Pryor was subbing out here with a 12-point deficit. He's giving his, his young veterans, because a lot of these girls played last year. They've now gone through a whole season, two years, and, and a lot of some players only get two years. And so he's giving them a little talk. I'm sure he's saying about, remember this feeling, because we don't ever want to feel it again. He brought it up before getting here for a lot of schools. That's the goal, winning a whole other level. These are two programs that have eyes only set on that gold ball, which is in that far corner. And in about a half minute, we'll be coming back for the third straight time. A nice moment as Lindsey Halpin will be subbed off. It's a big hug from the greatest coach in Section 1 history in girls basketball. And one of the greatest in any sport. Oh, it's 5 with the rebound. Almost, almost an amazing reverse layup there by Abby Conklin. Grace Thibault, an eighth grade. Six foot two, eighth grade. So before we start handing out any goal balls in the next couple years for Briar Clippers, remember that Irvington still has a team. Still going to have the greatest coach ever. Val and they have a six Valdez, foot two, eighth grader yeah. coming back. Valdez still a junior. Oh, this whole team. Valdez Harrison is a junior. junior. Yeah. This could be a championship Just rematch for a couple of years. When you now. take away the Lindsay Halpin factor, it makes things very difficult. And the middle schooler will hit the free throw. 15 seconds to play. Briarcliff's going to dribble out the clock. And for the seventh time in the last eight years and the third consecutive season, the Irvington Bulldogs are Section 1 Class B champs. They always talk about complete team efforts. It's exactly what you saw today. Their leading score shut down for the most part, doing it in other ways. Seven assists. She got Olivia Valdez involved, and Olivia Valdez took this game over. 21 points. She did it all within the flow of the offense, and I, I think as good as she was offensively, she made even more happen defensively. She is the reason why Irvington avoided what would have been a massive upset. They beat them by 29 points in the regular season. You can't lose in the championship game with those odds in your favor, and they don't lose. Olivia Valdez is the big reason why. And they win the championship by 14. 58-44 to final score here from the Westchester County Center. We'll be back with more on News 12 Varsity. On March 12th, starting at 11 a.m., watch the best of Long Island High School basketball battle for the right to be called champions. Live on Channel 14. This doubleheader begins at 11 a.m. with the Class A Finals. Followed by the Class AA Finals at 1.30 p.m. 
Watch the best of Long Island High School basketball live on the big screen on Optimum Channel, Channel 14. Irvington, your champions in Class B. We now send it to Kevin Devaney Jr., who's standing by with Olivia Valdez. Thanks, Dan. She didn't win MVP, but she was our player of the game, Olivia Valdez, 21 points. Obviously, Lindsay getting bottled up a little bit. How did it take on to you to be the girl who picked them up? Well, when Lindsay wasn't shooting well, like, that doesn't shake us up. Yeah, she's our, like, through the season, she was our leading scorer, but that just didn't make us, like, scared. We just had to push through it, and I guess, like, I just had the hype, and, like, I guess it came through. She hit one shot in the first half. It was a pretty good shot. It was at the buzzer from behind the head. How much of an emotional lift was that going upstairs? I think that that shot got us, like, very, like, hype and, like, just, like, made us, like, work harder. Like, that put us up in halftime, and as the outcome came, we won. Coach said this was not going to be, like, the 29-point blowout win you guys had in the regular season. Did you guys believe that, and how early on did you realize that that was going to be the case? Well, we didn't think that this was going to be, like, we were going to blow them out, even though we, like, beat them by a lot during this, like, season. But, like, they got better, we got better. But I think we were just playing scared in the beginning. But I think we played our game towards the end. You never want to make it about you personally, but how gratifying is it to have a game like this in a championship game? Honestly, it's just my, like, it's speechless. Like, I don't think, I never thought I could play like that. But I guess... I did. You did, and they're going to need to do maybe four more times to yeah. win a state championship. You start yeah. thinking about that. You enjoy this for how long, and then when do you think about states? Um, well, we're going to get through the next game, one game at a time, and we're hoping we can make it to states. So, yeah. Olivia, congratulations. Dan, back up to you. So for the third consecutive season, the Bulldogs will have that gold ball sitting in their trophy case. That's going to do for us here at News 12 Varsity. Many thanks to the entire crew as always. For our producer, Colby Nelson, and my broadcast partner, Kevin Devaney Jr., I'm Dan Savarino saying thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time.